The cyclists can soon find more reasons to hop on their bicycles for leisure or as a means to commute to work in the future, with a national plan to promote cycling as an alternative mode of transport in the works. Central to that plan is an extensive network of cycling paths to be built across the island. But will this be enough to develop a cycling culture? Saiful Bahru Ismail examines the challenges of making cycling a more viable option and a way of life in Singapore in this week's Spotlight. In Ong is off to work. The 35-year-old architect has decided to leave his car behind and pedal to the office instead from his home in Topayo. As the avid cyclist hits the road, he's reminded of a few near misses he's experienced. There was a bus trying to overtake me. I was on the left lane and the bus basically had not much space. So while he was overtaking me, he came very close to my handlebar, almost uh, scraped me as well. Authorities recognize the hazards of road cycling and they are doing more to encourage off-road cycling on cycling paths and park connectors. Under the new Land Transport Master Plan, more than 700 kilometres of cycling paths will be built by 2030. The Land Transport Authority also plans to connect cycling paths between adjacent towns. In addition, it's exploring inter-town cycling routes for cyclists to commute to the central business district. Observers say implementing the plans will be a challenge. For example, it may be difficult to build cycling paths between towns that are separated by expressways. It's not going to be an ultimate solution because the cycling, path, the cycling path is not going to stretch to every corner of the island. Right? So at some point, cyclists will have to get off the path onto the road to get to where they want to go. And when they go on the roads and share it with motorists, safety becomes a concern. Cycling groups have been advocating for dedicated cycling lanes on the roads. They argue that roads in Singapore are big enough to accommodate cyclists. By repainting lane markings, more space can be created for cyclists between the curb and double yellow lines. If we can just mark this double yellow line off maybe another meter, and you will, you will create a segregated space so that car driver does not need to constantly worry whether the cyclist in front may be getting into that path, and also cyclists will feel more relaxed. However, the Transport Ministry disagrees with this idea, saying that road space is limited in Landscare Singapore. While there's no official data on the number of cyclists here, anecdotal evidence shows that the numbers are growing. The OCBC Cycle Singapore, which is the biggest cycling event here, has recorded increasing numbers of participants in the sports and the recreational categories. This year, about 11,500 cyclists took part, an increase of 15% compared to 2012. But even with more cyclists, observers say motorists who have a stronger lobbying power are not ready to share the roads. Just look at our expressway. We have a shoulder lane um, that is supposed to be meant for breakdown vehicles and emergency vehicles. But what happened during a bad jam? Right? Drivers will use that to cut through cut the queue. If I have to, going to have the bike lane there, what's going to happen? Right? They're going to all obstruct the bike lane. Um, or a motorcycle will cut through using the bicycle lane right, during a jam. So all these are going to happen if we don't change that mindset. We don't know how to use facilities properly. Right? So in fact, if that happens, it's going to be more creating more danger to the cyclists. If there's a dedicated cycling lane and if there are efforts to make cycling a lot safer on our roads, I would definitely cycle more often to work. Transport experts say that while having a well-designed cycling infrastructure is important, a vibrant cycling culture goes beyond that. Education is also a key factor. Europe, for example, I know that in many countries it is um, the case that in primary school, there is actually a police officer that comes by for a couple of times and then children are starting cycling. So with time, you develop a society that is, uh, knows how to cycle, that feels confident to cycle and then obviously also can use this infrastructure uh, in a good way. 
Tampanese is one estate that has put in place three key features, infrastructure, enforcement, education, turning it into the country's first cycling town. It's the only place in Singapore where cyclists can use footways legally. In 2010, the town council introduced new bylaws to take enforcement action against reckless cycling on footways. Offenders could be fined between $50 and $1,000. The town council has hired auxiliary police officers to patrol and issue summons and warnings to reckless cyclists. My experience is that it does not make sense to close your eye to the reality that people are using the footpath to cycle. They are breaking the rules every day if, if you make it illegal or you continue to make it illegal. So the question is, do you continue to make it illegal and still close your eye or do you do something about it? Some cyclists in other towns agree the ban on footway cycling should be lifted. By right, it should, because of the public uh, riding bicycle a lot uh, around here, it's quite easy, but it just depends on yourself how you ride. If there's a crowd, just come down and avoid the crowd, lah, push the bike. But some pedestrians are undecided. When I was walking, I think it was at night, so there was this person was cycling from the back. I think he's, uh, what do you call that, the bell, is it? was not ringing. So he just um, came and slammed on me. I've experienced it, and I think it's extremely dangerous. You make it legal, there must be enforcement. No? The cyclist just simply cycles on the footpath without any care, then you have problems. Huh? And these problems is you stay at me, I stay at you, and then there are disputes. No end to it. MP for Tampanese Irene Ng believes there's a need for a national strategy that's consistent and sustainable. And she agrees that more needs to be done besides focusing on infrastructure. There's no education, there's no, not enough enforcement. There are different ministries involved, and when there are different ministries involved, you do need a strong political will to pull everything together and to make it move forward. Hin Ong's journey to work is winding down as he approaches his office in Chinatown. He has been on the road for about 30 minutes and will soon be calling his wife to tell her he's safe at work. The past few years have seen a marked policy shift in how the government views cycling. Previously, cycling was seen more as a form of recreation, but now is being recognised as a possible mode of transportation. With the wheels set in motion, a more coordinated approach will be needed to make Singapore a safer cycling city.